in the Pledge of Allegiance. So if you could join me, I would appreciate it. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And it really is one nation under God, not one nation under God. I couldn't help that. Okay, so this is a de novo public hearing for board review public comment and board action on an appeal of a planning commission decision to deny an Elk River property development land use application AD 1705 for the analysis of alternative routes for a pipeline and ancillary facilities to deliver recycled wastewater located for irrigation of the golf course. Today, the board will hold a de novo public hearing for board review, public comment, and action on an appeal of a planning commission decision to deny Elk River property development land use application AD 1705. The application is for the analysis of alternate routes for a pipeline and ancillary facilities to deliver recycled wastewater located for irrigation of a golf course as listed on the properties noted in the staff report. The hearing procedure is outlined on page one of the staff report under the heading of hearing procedure. The first item says, identify and follow the hearing procedure specified in the zoning ordinances, ordinance 2.1402A through D, which I will go through now. The application, excuse me, the applicable substantive criteria for the board's review are ORS 215.283 and ORS 215.246, testimony and evidence received today for application AD 1705, must be directed towards these ORS sections. Failure to raise an issue with sufficient specificity to enable the board and parties an opportunity to respond to the, pub to the issue precludes an appeal to the Land Use Board of Appeals. Issues raised in the public hearing must be identified by the the close of record at or following the final hearing, either in person or in writing. Any party shall be entitled to a continuance hearing if additional documents or evidence is provided in support of the application. Normally, the zoning ordinance would allow the board to continue this matter for a minimum of 14 days upon request of a party. Because of the timing of the appeal hearing, we will not automatically apply this section of the zoning ordinance. The zoning ordinance section 2.120 talks about who con constitutes a party for purposes of speaking during the public hearing. It says that to be recognized as a party in an appeal of a land use decision, a person must either have filed the appeal and appeared before the local governing body either orally or in writing. The board shall first determine that the person is a party before deciding the merits of the issue. The balance of the procedures for the hearing can be found in the hearing procedures section on page one of staff report items two through 10 and are as follows. The community development director will provide an oral report. The board may ask questions of the director during her presentation, but should save lengthy questions for the board deliberation. The board will then accept testimony from parties in favor of the application, followed by acceptance of testimony from other parties. Each party may offer rebuttal evidence and testimony. The board during its deliberations may direct questions to the parties and to county staff. The board will discuss potential findings and will direct staff to bring back a final order because there is no final order before the board today. At the conclusion of today's public comments, the board will determine whether to leave the record open to the date when the final order will be reviewed. Staff has recommended the board adopt the final order no later than January 31st, 2018. Does the board have any questions? No, Madam Chair. So I'm going to turn it over to the uh, Community Development Director, Carolyn Johnson and she will inquire of each board member specific questions regarding conflict of interest and ex parte communication. 
The community development director will then present an oral report. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, Commissioner Gold, regarding land use application AD 1705, do you have an actual conflict of interest? No. A potential conflict of interest? No. A direct or substantial financial interest in the proceeding? No. The ability to render a fair judgment because of prejudice or prejudgment? No. Have you had communication with any party regarding application AD 1705? No. Commissioner Boyce, um, regarding land use application AD 1705, do you have an actual conflict of interest? No. Do you have a potential conflict of interest? No. A direct or substantial financial interest in the proceeding? No. The ability to render a fair judgment? Yes. Have you had communication with any party regarding application AD 1705? not regarding the application. Okay. Commissioner Huxley, um, regarding application AD 1705, do you have an actual conflict of interest? No. Do you have a potential conflict of interest? No. Um, do you have a direct or substantial financial interest in the proceeding? No. Do you have the ability to render a fair judgment? Yes. Have you had communication with any party regarding application AD no. 1705? I have to change my answer on that one question, the one before. Do I have the ability to render a fair judgment? Yes. yes. Okay. I think I said. Financial interest in the proceeding? No. Do you have the ability to render a fair judgment? Yes. Have you had communication with any party regarding application AD no. 1705? I have to change my answer on that one question, the one before. Do I have the ability to render a fair judgment? Yes. yes. Okay. I think I said. To render a fair judgment? Yes. Have you had communication with any? Uh, as part of the future, the DEQ. EQ future action, ERCD must show compliance with a number of ORS requirements. Um, and I'm going to back up for a minute because I just mentioned the evaluation of the DEQ uh, by DEQ and what the board uh, decides to do. Um, this action that you take is not appealable to LUBA, and that was an error on my part in preparing your script. I apologize. So um, once the board makes a decision, that's, that's where it lays, okay? So moving on, um, the first ORS that we're looking at is one that requires applicants to secure DEQ permits for compliance with certain technical requirements. That's number 1A, and it requires the applicant to identify in writing for public comments alternative locations for the pipeline with an explanation as to why other alternatives are not identified. That's why you have these alternatives um, behind you, these two alternatives. And the applicant will also need to address any comments that were provided by the public uh, today or prior to now, um, and if or how those work. Regarding requirement number three, the alternatives are identified in the staff report. Um, and a little bit ago. Um, those alternatives can also be addressed in the public testimony today. If public comments are received today that introduce new evidence related to identified, these identified alternatives or new alternatives, then the applicant will need to be granted an opportunity to evaluate those, those alternatives that might be new today <coughs> that they haven't seen before. Regarding, regarding Regarding the requirement to secure DEQ permits, if the board, in your final order, when you make a decision on this, authorizes the alternatives analysis, then there would need to be a condition of approval that would require the applicant to secure the DEQ permits that are required. Um, this is fairly common in most applications that you have conditions. 
that being said, the applicant would then be able to have the proposal meet the requirement of 215-246-1A. ORS 215-246-3 requires an applicant to explain how public comments on the alternatives have been addressed and explain reasons for not using any identified and adequately detailed alternatives. Any alternatives that are proposed by the public or anyone else for that matter need to be very clear. They have to make sense and the applicant is required to address those. I will leave it to them to address those in their testimony today. Um, also, in much of the background of the staff report, I think you can see where they have addressed uh, testimony. If the board adopts a final order affirming that the applicant has adequately considered public comments on the alternatives, then the applicant will have satisfied ORS 215-246-3. ORS 215-246-4A allows the treatment of reclaimed water, ag or industrial processed biowater or biosolids that occur as a result of the land application. ERDC is proposing uh, the use of the tr for treatment of reclaimed water consistent with this section. 215-246-4B authorizes establishment and use of facilities including buildings, equipment, aerated and non-aerated water impoundments, pumps, and other irrigation equipment that are accessory to and reasonably necessary for the land application to occur on the subject track. The recycled water pipeline that's proposed by ERCD and the ancillary items that they need, the pond, I think there's a small outbuilding, um, there's a few other things that they can talk about. Um, those uh, features are consistent with the authorization specified in 215-246-4B. We move on to 4C of that same ORS. It authorizes facilities or transport of reclaimed water if the facilities are within a public right-of-way or other lands subject to the property owner's consent. The um, alternatives behind you, um, you can see that the preferred alternative on your left uh, takes you down the public right-of-way and the other alternative runs over private property. Uh, the applicants have secured the consent of those private property owners and it's included in the stack of information in your board packet. Um, the ERDC pipeline alternatives either use the public right-of-way or, or are over private property, whichever one is, is selected by them and would therefore comply with ORS 215-246-4C. <coughs> This is one that um, has, has uh, received quite a bit of scrutiny and, and uh, comment, especially by the Planning Commission, but it says through 215-283-1V, the following uses may be established in any area zone for exclusive farm use. This area is zoned for exclusive farm use, subject to the issuance of a license by DEQ. The applicant is applying for a license for the land application for reclaimed water or for irrigation in connection with a use that's allowed in an exclusive farm use zone under this chapter. The alternatives um, for the water pipeline for irrigation that's proposed can be established over EFU property to a golf course site, which is also an allowed use in the EF EFU zone. The applicant's request for board, the board to review the alternatives for the location of the recycled water pipeline are consistent with ORS 215-283. I think what's important here is to note that a golf course is an authorized, is, is an allowed use in an EFU zone, and the pipeline is a permitted use under this section. As noted in the staff report, the applicant complies with the zoning regulations regarding the processing of this application. There's quite a number of them. I'm not going to go through them. Um, and, they, and the alternatives analysis and the ORS requirements for local authorization of the proposed recycled water pipeline and its ancillary facilities. Uh, your staff is recommending that the board uphold the appeal and approve the alternatives analysis proposed by uh, the applicant. Um, direction should be provided by the board after you have your discussion, after you have 
have heard all public testimony as to uh, what you wish to do. And once you've come to a consensus, we will be seeking direction from you so that we can prepare a final order. We would propose to bring that back to you um, no later than January 31st. Um, at the writing of this report, that was the date that we were recommending. Um, we have received some requests here for uh, continuances uh, beyond that potentially, so I think during the discussion we can go over that a little bit. So that's all I have at this point. If you have any questions, I'm going to sit over there and I have this microphone. So the important question that we're bringing forth today is, are we going to allow DEQ to determine whether these possible routes are okay for the, the irrigation pipes? Is that well? That's kind of how it would bottom line. That's kind of how it would fall out. DEQ is looking to the board to look at this analysis and and say yes, you've completed this analysis adequately. And John has comments as well. Um, thanks, Commissioner. Just to try to go with the language of the statute uh, the the applicant has submitted for a permit to DEQ to what's called land apply the treated water um, to the golf course property and um, and DEQ says you need to have the local government take public testimony and the what actually is supposed to happen is they've proposed either one of these and I think Carolyn is uh, the planning director has mentioned alternative routes, but I think it's just alternatives besides just the route. I mean, it's sure. Thank you. Okay, so it's mm -hmm. alternatives to the application to land apply treated uh, biosolids to to property out there, um, and then what happens is the applicant submits their proposals, and actually the public is supposed to identify alternatives, and the applicant is supposed to respond to those. And then you're supposed to decide, has the applicant adequately responded to those? If, in your opinion, the applicant has adequately responded, then you just say they've adequately responded, and then you submit that report to the DEQ. So, um, and, and I think the applicant's agent can probably do a better job of fine-tuning that, but essentially um, that's, what, that's how the statute reads. The, the purpose of, of here um, what it says is it says an applicant to the DEQ shall explain in writing how alternatives identified in public comments um, on the land use decision were considered and if the alternatives are not used explain in writing the reasons for not using the alternatives the applicant which means the um, golf course folks here the applicant must consider only those alternatives that are identified with so that the public has the duty to identify for you alternatives other than these here. So and these two are the ones that are proposed by the golf course. Yes. Folks. Correct. And so and really the, public could the golf course will explain its proposal and then the public will say why different alternatives should be used. This is a statute that we're here that we've been directed by the DEQ to apply. So and it says a land use decision relating to the land application um, may not be reversed or remanded under this subsection unless the applicant failed to consider publicly identified alternative that included the word publicly but it says identify alternatives or explain in writing the reasons for not using the alternative so the really the applicant puts on their application and then it's really opened up to the public for the public to come in and say here's alternatives they need to consider and then the applicant has to give responses to those um, and it says the applicant must ex explain um, you know why th that they considered alternatives and what what was done and you have to decide if they've considered those alternatives adequately that's that's my understanding of the statute and again it, it sounded a little different from what Carolyn was saying and I not trying to confuse things I was actually trying to simplify it but we'll let the applicant talk to it as well well actually I I, I think I pointed that out when I okay. mentioned that we had um, new comments from the public that we would not had a chance to review which was why our our recommendation was to go to January 31st. If there are new comments and ideas that have come up as alternatives, the applicant is obliged to evaluate those in writing and we'd have to look at the timing for that to happen so that you could, you could sufficiently take an action um, with their evaluation. 
So all of these emails and so forth are theoretically um, public alternatives to... We don't know that. I haven't read them all. Well, no. I'm going I, to sift through that's them. That's why I said theoretically. You your deliberations, and um, I'm guessing that you'll probably hear from some people too. But um, okay. And the applicant, I don't know that they've been given the latest pet batch of these. Um, uh, but Commissioner Huxley? Get them a copy. But er, anything received, it's just a question up to right now, basically, is to be considered or must be considered by the applicant. Is that correct? Yes. Any, anything that's received, you know, prior to the close of the public hearing and conceivably, if there's been a request for a continuation, um, if you could close the public hearing, leave the record open, additional uh, matters could come in if the record is left open then the applicant would have an additional amount of time to respond to those and again I think the applicant's attorney can walk us through some of that and we can fine-tune it but um, I think you could hear from them but essentially there's there's a possibility for additional information to come in even after we close the public hearing that the applicant is going to be responsible for considering and responding to this board about um, so there's I think we're going to be going beyond today, but the bulk of our work will be today. Okay, so we're going to move on to accept testimony from parties who are in favor of the application. So I guess if you raise your hand and come up to the uh, mics and... You normally start with the applicant, Madam Chair. The applicant. Okay, yeah. that wasn't here, that's but just, we'll have the applicant. That's customary anyway. <laughs> I've never done one of these, so... You're already an expert. Commissioners, uh, <laughs> I'm Bill Close and I'm representing the applicant today. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, is that a little bit better? Okay. Um, I'm going to do this backwards uh, since we uh, have most recently been talking <coughs> with staff about process. Maybe I could start with process and then move on to the nuts and bolts. Uh, I think staff. Uh, summarized it accurately uh, the, the safe cautious we want to do this correctly we don't necessarily we, we want to do it quickly we want to do it safely so fast is not always better uh, staff correctly noted that you got um, two packets of information in today one has already been passed on to us it's from the attorney for the, uh, the opponents Sean Malone who generates a lot of work for me in Lane County and uh, then apparently there were some other letters that came in yes, as well right and I haven't seen those yet and that's fine okay. we'll get all that um, there's been a request by mr. Malone um, asking for for keeping asking to keep the record open for 14 days that's a reasonable request uh, there's some language in the code that could be read to say he has an absolute right to that so I think the cautious thing to do is to keep the record open for 14 days for anyone to submit any evidence they want on any issue. Uh, so that would mean 14 days, a lot more information could come in. Some of it could be repetitive, some of it could be new, we don't know. And then keep the record open for another seven days to allow everybody to respond with evidence to what came in in the first 14 days. So that means everybody's had a chance to put in new evidence and everybody's had a chance to respond to the new evidence that's come in. So that's the 14 first and then seven. No new evidence, it's just discussion and argument or proposed findings or contributions to proposed findings based on evidence that's already in the record. So that would be a fairly traditional and safe and cautious way to handle this. So I just want to throw that out to you um, uh, as an initial procedural point and then shift gears and, and talk about the merits. Uh, four months ago, I never would have thought we would be here with all of these issues in front of you because the application we initially filed with the county was about 
was an application for just about the simplest thing you could ask the county to do. Um, a decision by the county uh, recognizing that we had um, addressed alternative locations for this use. A very general proceeding which would then give us the right to have DEQ do the technical analysis on what we want to do which is to recycle wastewater to productive use. Uh, they're the technicians on this application, you're the generalists. So things were going along swimmingly uh, until they went a little bit sideways at the Planning Commission. At the Planning Commission things got more complex. Planning Commission um, injected some new issues into the proceeding and then added its own gloss on what the law is. Uh, and as a result of that, they denied our application. Right, and there's, we're, we are in a de novo hearing and a lot of people have asked what that means, and it means a fresh and a new. The only um, prohibition in our code in this de novo hearing is that we don't give deference to the Planning Commission, but our code also says that we um, do not consider um, the decision of the lower body. So I just um, really want to caution the board on too much emphasis on what the Planning Commission did or didn't do. I think just looking at the application anew is really appropriate. And I agree with that Thank comment you. by okay. your counsel. All right. But everything the Planning Commission did <laughs> is in the record before you. So that means we have to deal with it. Um, so the the wrinkles we encountered at the Planning Commission were, were really were really two. Uh, the first was touched on by um, staff, and that is the Planning Commission took the notion that um, this request that was placed before the county could only uh, be granted for a use that had an active, valid permit from the county. Uh, that is the, a golf course, a live and well permit. That's really not what the statute requires. The statute only asks whether the use that the water is requested to be put to is a use that can be permitted or is allowed in this zone. So the answer is quite simple. Uh, golf courses are allowed, therefore an applicant's entitled to come to the county and ask permission to uh, put recycled wastewater uh, toward that use. Uh, the, the way the statute's correctly read, you don't have to have an active uh, valid permit to go develop a golf course. You don't have to have a golf, golf course at all. You could go get one in the future. So there's really a uh, separation between uh, the use that's potential, this that can be made in the FU zone and the use you're asking for, which is applying recycled water. So uh, our view of the statute is consistent with staff's view, and that is it's all uh, kind of theoretical. The Planning Commission then took a next step and said, well, we think that your golf course permit is invalid because you didn't ask to have that permit extended during the first year that was issued as required by a condition on your golf course approval. And so they kind of connected those dots then and they said, because we think you don't have an active land use approval to do the golf course because you didn't ask to have the original approval extended, you're not entitled to this new application to uh, get the county's blessing to apply the recycled uh, uh, wastewater. So that meant that all of a sudden the question of whether or not the county's land use approval for the golf course is still valid was squarely on the table. And so that's a much bigger question. And we made our case to the Planning Commission that it was alive and well. Uh, staff made its case to the Planning Commission that the golf course approval was alive and well. And the reason for that is because the golf course development actually commenced during the first year. That is, there was development activity. Uh, related to the golf course. 
And once that happens, you don't need to go extend the approval for the golf course. You've already got it going in the ground. So that's a very basic question. And I think that's probably the most important question you'll have to address in your decision. Uh, we presented evidence to the Planning Commission of work that was done in the golf course, uh, monies that were spent, work that was accomplished, and we've really embellished that a bit in the record before you, and that's all in front of you in the way of, um, in way of uh, expenses that are documented, uh, pictures of work that's been done, and so on. Uh, generally speaking, that work has consisted of doing a lot of earth moving and vegetation removal that, that was required to be done as part of the golf course approval. Um, uh, uh, and related expenses for equipment and labor and such, and also well development. Uh, and it's documented in detail uh, in the record, and we don't have to uh, slog through it here. But our ma major point is that because there was development activity during the first year, that original land use approval is alive and well, and there's no need to come back to the county and ask, you know, year by year to extend the original land use approval. I'm not sure what the opponents think is required in the way of continuing to get extensions of the original land use approval. They may think that uh, you need to keep extending this land use approval for the golf course on a yearly basis until the first golf ball is hit off the first tee a couple years down the road. I don't know, but I think the answer is a lot simpler than that. When you initiate development activity, which we've done here, you've got the use going in the ground and you no longer have to extend the, the land use permit. So that's a little more than I needed to say on that, but that is, that's sort of the bigger issue that's consumed the smaller proceeding about uh, wastewater. Uh, and so um, I think the staff materials, staff reports concur in our view of that, and we look forward to you addressing that issue head on uh, in, your, in your final order. So, uh, in, I took a quick glance um, to, uh, in all my proceedings in Lane County. He shows up at the hearing and puts that stuff in, so today uh, he submitted it uh, three hours early, which, was, uh, which is uh, uh, courteous. And I made a quick trip through all those materials. There's really nothing new in there um, that we haven't seen before. Um, there is an allegation that uh, we've been out there um, destroying wetlands. Uh, there's no, he's not pointing to wetlands that we've destroyed. He's just saying, look at all those pictures you submitted in evidence uh, in support of your having started actual golf course construction. You're filling wetlands. Well, in fact, uh, we are not. It would be nice if he would point out the wetlands he thought we were filling. But in fact, the work that's been, not been done out there has been um, at the direction of the applicant's wetland consultant in the way of removing gorse, uh, which is not a wetland plant. So, I mean, that, that's the generalized level of allegation that we see in these materials. Uh, the other item that struck me in today's materials from Mr. Malone is a short sentence saying, we failed to consider all of the alternatives. Reasonable thing to say, what alternatives have we failed to consider? Um, if they're serious about uh, an alleged failing on our part in that respect, then I would expect that sometime in the next 14 days, they would specify another alternative with sufficient specificity that we can respond to it. Uh, and then we can, of course, respond to it in our in our seven day submittal. <clears throat> so that's really the big picture on uh, speaking a little bit longer than I intended to. But uh, if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. And our developer teams here, and they, of course, are much more familiar with the facts than I am. Does anybody have any questions? Okay. No questions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Do you reserve time for rebuttal? Thank you. Okay. If I need them. Yep. Okay, next we'll accept testimony from parties who are in favor of the application. Do we have anybody here who 
Yeah. There might be others one to in favor. I'm not sure. These are for the ones in favor. Okay. Mr. Boff? Yes. Commissioners, I appreciate the opportunity to um, address this. Uh, purely looking at it as an economic standpoint. Can we get, is, your, can we get sorry, your name? Sorry, Samuel Baugh uh, with South Coast Development Council. Thank you. Uh, strictly looking at it from an economical, economic development standpoint, does a $30 million investment in this community make sense? Yes, it does. Uh, does ancillary businesses to help a golf course grow, does that make sense? Yes, it does. Do, will this opportunity increase the economy of this county? Absolutely it will. Uh, will it encourage more visitation to the area? Absolutely. I think this is a fantastic idea and we have to be able to let this happen. It seems like there are some people that are saying, the golf course is a great idea, but we don't care what they do with their wastewater. And they just want it left as wastewater instead of this recycling alternative. And so I would strongly recommend that you, you think through what, what, is, uh, what is going on and you know, uh, grant their application. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any other testimony in favor? Please state your name. Okay, thank you. Uh, commissioners, my name is Eric Oberbeck and I live in Sixes, Oregon, uh, North County. Um, I just kind of uh, piecemealed the uh, DEQ ordinance notwithstanding, which still doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. You have to consider alternative routes. Um, I was, a, I am a an active geologist in this area and I was asked by Studsner to review the preferred route there um, for your um, thought process I see no geologic issues no stability issues um, for that as far as as far as that being the primary route for the affluent line to the north um, it, it has not been stated yet today but the the uh, what the the applicants are proposing to do is to take wastewater effluent and use that to irrigate the golf course. The golf course becomes a huge bioswale, which has been proven to be effective in, in cleaning and neutralizing contaminants such as um, um, pathogens and, and um, a variety of other things. And that, in my estimation, is a is much more beneficial and much a better solution than just dumping it into the ocean which is what we're doing now so i i recommend and i think that the applicants um, plan is a good one and then finally as far as the ultimate decision as to whether to continue the conditional use application that you um, granted the applicants and which was upheld in 2016 by luba I think it sets a dangerous precedent for the county to issue a, a permit, a capital intensive permit such as this, and then to pull that permit for no real substantial reason. I think that that sends a message to other potential future developers. So I encourage you to um, uphold the conditional use permit. Thank you. Thank you. We had another, Mr. King. These are people in favor. We're still doing the favor one. Carl King, the Sika Beach. As I said earlier today, I've spent several decades of my life dealing with land use issues. But even longer than that, I dealt with sewer treatment issues. When I moved to a coastal town 50 years ago on the other coast, none of the sewer effluent in that town was treated at all. Individual property owners in the municipality had little outfalls, some of them within hundreds of feet of the public beaches. And over the next 40 some years, I watched the requirements grow and grow and grow. First, it was a regional treatment plant with primary treatment, and then there was secondary treatment and then the key, I think, for this 
the outfalls from that plant had to be extended further and further and further offshore. Boston Harbor is now swimmable because millions and millions of dollars were spent extending the outfall pipe and building a new treatment plant. There is, I can't point to the specific section of your zoning ordinance, but my memory is it is typical of all zoning ordinances that says that when you consider a permit application, you take into account the public interest. And I can't think of anything that could be more in the public interest of the people who pay for sewer treatment in Fort Orford than providing a means of disposing of their affluent, their treated wastewater that doesn't put it into a area where some government, whether it's the state or the federal, someday is gonna knock on their door and require them to spend millions of dollars to get it further away. And I can't believe, given how important the fisheries are in this state, that you would not wanna take this stuff out of the ocean and put it on the golf course. So I strongly support this, this appeal and think to me it's a no-brainer. You gotta let them do it. Thank you. Thank you. I think there was another, yes. Commissioners, uh, I'm Dave. <clears throat> I'm Dave Bassett, a registered professional engineer. I've lived in Port Orford since 05, but I bought property there in 95. And I watched the El Nino storms take away the dune uh, septic leach field that the city used to use in 90, 96 and 7. So those El Nino storms took away not only the outfall of Garrison Lake that I was quite involved in restoring, which is now working rather well, but I also watched the installation of the underground tube that took the wastewater treatment plant out into the ocean. I'm now aware, as a port commissioner, that that's not such a great idea. It's not such a good thing for the marine environment that we hoped it might be. So I sent you an email through Carolyn that says, please look at this as a public safety alternative. The city has to have some plan B for taking their wastewater elsewhere. This is the best one that we can possibly, it's a gift. Thank you. Thank you. Any other in favor? Yes. State your name, please. Thank you, commissioners. My name is Chris Hawthorne. I am a long-term resident of Curry County in Port Orford. I am a business owner in Port Orford. And of course, I'm in favor of the golf course, but more importantly, I feel that this, uh, this uh, use of our treated effluent is a gift to the city of Port Orford. And I would really encourage you to facilitate that ha happening because we need it. Uh, as a former port commissioner, I understand we, it's for so many reasons. We need an alternative to pumping it directly into the ocean. Thank you. Thank you. Any other in favor? Yes. <clears throat> Commissioners, my name is Roger Meter, general manager for Coos Curry Electric Co-op. Uh, just to let you know, there's we've looked at all the engineering. We've done the engineering for this facility. It literally has no impact at all to the plant in Port Orford. Uh, we would be very interested, potentially at whatever route is selected, potentially looking to see if once that trench is open, if we could maybe bury some of our overhead lines. Mm -hmm. One of the excuse me, one of the expenses is opening a ditch to bury power lines, and so. If I could wave a wand and bury our entire system up and down the coast, that would be wonderful, but I don't have five billion dollars, and nor do the ratepayers. Uh, but again, we're very much in support of the project. I happen to live in Bandon, and the economy that Bandon Dunes brings to the city of Bandon is incredible. The restaurants, the grocery stores, the gas stations, it's just, you see that Bandon Dunes logo, on people everywhere. So again, I just encourage encourage the project to go forward. Thank you. Thank you. Any other uh, in favor? Yes. Uh, 
My name is Daryl Robinson. I live in Sixes, and I've been living uh, in the county here for probably longer than some people have been alive here. And the economy not back me. then was oh, <laughs> not the case. <laughs> I'll take it back. I apologize. But the economy in, in Port Orford is really in dire straits now compared to what it was uh, 50 years ago. Uh, and it really needs some economic development. There's a lot of things going on there that would uh, create jobs. It would be so wonderful. Also, the invasive species of the gorse. Gorse is a real havoc at, in this county, and it would also eliminate a, a bunch of that. I see it as a win-win situation for both the city as well as the, the residents and as well as the uh, economic development that would create in uh, Curry County, especially in Port Orford. Thank you. Any other people in favor? Yes, ma'am. I'm Julie Hawthorne. I live in Sixes and I've been there for 45 years in Curry County. And it just sounds like a win win, obvious win win to take care of the effluent properly rather than dumping it into our fishery waters, waters and the economic boost to North County that we need so badly. Thank you. Thank you. Any other people that want to speak in favor? Yes, come on up. Thank you. My name's Jim Haley. I'm I'm the guy who started all this stuff. Sorry about that. Way to go. So, so go back three or four years ago when we first started this process and we, we looked at options, not unlike this pipeline, for irrigation water. And there's several different uh, waters available. There's winter water out of the Elk River that's available. There's, we drilled two wells that you'll see in the testimony. Uh, Jim Mack from the abandoned well, and he figures there was about 450 gallons a minute in those wells. So we had an option to apply for a water right for those wells. And then Troy Russell, our uh, project manager, came to me and said, City of Port Orford uh, only has one outfall, and it failed in 96 or 97. and." They currently have an ocean outfall. And then, so I started investigating that and um, became very aware that uh, the treated affluent, the big thing that the treatment doesn't do is take out the pharmaceuticals. So the pharmaceutical goes into your body and there's trace amounts that go out and then it goes into the ocean. And that affects the shellfish, their ability to hide and, and uh, um, so, so we had a decision to make. Are we going to go for the groundwater or are we going to go for the winter water out of the elk or are we going to ask Port Orford for the treated affluent? Port Orford's already passed a, a change in ordinance to their facilities plan to allow for a secondary outfall. They've also uh, approved a pipeline and a pump station to make that water available to us. Um, so I'm asking you to approve our uh, primary and secondary route and and uh, and let us move ahead. So thank you very much. And if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer. Thank you. Yep. Do we have any other people in favor of this proposition? Come on up, young lady. <laughs> have very many of those around. <laughs> Hi, my name is Ashley Hall. Um, I was raised in Port Orford. Um, my family owns a small business in the town. Um, I currently attend SWAC right now, and after I go to university and work professionally probably in the city for a few years, I um, plan on coming back here because it's my home, you know. Um, but I think that this is a great opportunity for our community to grow um, and give like economic opportunity to kids who are my age and in their tw early 20s right now. I mean, it gives us opportunity, it gives us industry, it gives us jobs. It gives us a reason to stay in the county instead of move away like a lot of my generation has so far. So I think it would be very beneficial to our community. Thank you. Any others in favor? Okay, uh, we'll accept testimony from other parties now. Anybody, other parties that want to have their testimony heard? Now this is interesting. Okay. Everybody's in favor, I guess. Okay, um, we'll allow the parties to offer rebuttal, but since there's no opposing testimony, I guess that doesn't have to happen. 
Uh, if requested by the board, uh, we'll continue the hearing to a date certain no later than January 31st. So. Well, we, you'd, you'd, Mr. Huddle first. Mr. Huddle. Madam Chair. Oh, well, thanks. Um, so again, and I know Commissioner Gold, you said it sounds like everyone's in favor. There's actually written testimony probably to the contrary. So don't forget that you'll need to review that um, before making a decision. But also it was something I just want to go back to when uh, Bill Close uh, began the presentation for the applicant. We do have a request uh, for a 14 day, um, keeping the record open for 14 days. I'd like to actually Carolyn, do you have the actual language of Mr. Malone's? Was it to keep the record open or was it to continue the hearing? Or is it? I emailed it. I know. I just wondered if you had a handy. Right I'm now, I'm scrambling sorry. Scrambling around. Is here. that part of this? Um, yes. Um, it is. Actually, it is. It's um, what page? Yeah. Well, it's the first page after the list of people. It says. Please note that ORCA has asked that the record remain open for 14 okay, days. Okay, good. So the record remain open. Oh, yeah, there it is. Yep. And then the other thing that um, Bill Close was talking about is that, uh, and why in your um, language that we gave you to announce to the audience today was that normally our code would allow an automatic extension of 14 days. There's a certain thing called the 150-day rule for applications outside of an urban growth boundary where a final decision has to be made. And, 150 days and because of the time taken since this application was submitted we may not have 14 days but the applicant's agent said um, that a appropriate thing to do and the applicant has the control of whether to extend that or not and it sounds like he did and we'll probably just ask him to come back up and really confirm that I'm getting a thumbs up so yeah. what what bottom line it sounds like what the next step would be is to close the public hearing there has been a request to keep the record open for 14 days. What that means is there will be 14 days for people to submit additional argument and evidence. And then there's seven days to respond to that for everyone. And then a final seven days. So we're talking 28 days now. Um, and the applicant gets basically closing argument on that. Mr. Close is here to kind of walk you through that a little bit. I just want to confirm in the flesh that we'll give you that additional Thank you. time on the because record. we don't Thank want any you. procedural sure. follow-ups and it's quite possible that we won't need our full seven days for the final argument. We could combine that with our proposed findings in order and things exactly like that. Right. Very good. Okay. So at this time, um, I think the, the recommendation would be uh, really to continue this matter to a date certain, close the, close the public hearing leave the record open for 14 days and then seven and then seven final for the applicant and bring it back here in 28 days for the board to act on make a decision okay do I, we, Ka Carolyn, we need do you have thoughts for on that? that yeah I think it would be helpful to identify the dates 14 days would That's be the 31st seven 14. days after that would be February 14 seven. hold on hold on 14. just what Ka Carolyn do you well, want to 14 well, I don't have a calendar in front of me, but I, right. know, I know 14 so days from today is the 31st. Yep. Right? So so the record, the, so Commissioner Gold, I believe you can close the public hearing. There's no one else here to speak for or against at this meeting. Okay. You can close the public, the public hearing. Public hearing is closed now. Good. Now, um, we will leave the record open for additional argument and testimony until January 31st, 2018. And I would... Do we need a motion to that effect? Um, hold on a second. I would just specify time since this often comes in via email. So I would say t 5 p.m. Sure. Okay. 5, 5 p.m.? 5 okay. p.m. January 31st, right. um, 2018. And I think what we're doing here, Commissioner Gold, is saying all these things and then you'll say, is there a motion to that effect? And someone will hopefully say, so move, and then we'll... Good, you there. get it straight and then we'll say All so right. move. Good. And then, so then after the 31st, there would be seven additional days for people to respond to whatever comes in in the next two weeks. And that would be February 7th at 5 p.m. And that's two we weeks or one week? No, that's one that's week. That's one week. It's, it's 14 and seven. Yeah, I thought you seven. said two. That's the reason I. Thanks, Commissioner. I, just, I did mean one. If I said okay. two, I meant seven additional days. Um, this is sometimes called re loosely the 777 rule or seven or the 1477 but regardless so on on February 7th is everyone's everyone's opportunity to respond 
to whatever comes in between now and the 31st. And then on February 14th, the board would hold a special meeting um, because it's, that would be the final day for only the applicant to make their essentially closing arguments to the board. Um, and so that would then be when the board would have all of the evidence and testimony and documentation synthesized into a final document that you could that would summarize everything you've seen with arguments both ways and then the board would make a decision or on the 14th um, a preliminary decision to approve or deny the application okay, so when you, would you when you say preliminary well it could you? be the final it could but it could be either the preliminary or the final depending on how much came in and what more needs to be done okay. but at least a decision would be made on the 14th of February okay and we would likely have another special meeting and that would occur perhaps at 2 30 again something like that Carolyn do you have what what are your I guess my thought is yeah I, I agree with you I think you should set a specific time I do too. and um, right. I guess I'm also wondering too if the board can have a discussion at this time um, sure. on on all, all of the, that they've heard and, and uh, express any thoughts they may have. Or if you have any questions yes. of staff. Or... We're not trying to rush you here. Nope. We're just yeah, trying to nail anything down. anything you've heard yeah. today. I would also, uh, for, you have heard some things about economics and whatnot. Um, you know, like it would be good for the general economy. I don't know that those kind of comments are specific to the statutory criterion for land application of biosolids to land in an EFU zone. Um, so I, I would just try to remind the board to make your decision based on the criteria and the statutes that the planning oh, director have put in the staff report. So um, never, never would take that into consideration. Okay, thanks, Commissioner. I, I, I did have one other question as well. Um, the applicant's representative, Mr. Kluse, talked about um, identifying the life of this use permit and if I'd like to ask him if, if you are asking the board to do that within the context of their final order. I think so, because the Planning Commission tied, it, it's part and parcel of the Planning Commission decision now. Well, and it's, it's also arguments made by Mr. Malone. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So okay. more, yeah, I think more importantly. No, it's now a bundle. Your final decision is really a bundle. Yeah. You know, one is on the DEQ permit, and then the other is on the, uh, related to that, the continued validity of the original CUP. I guess then I would ask um, if there are things that you would like staff to do um, in preparation for these next steps, information that you would like to see. I'd kind of like to see both sides of the issue in a very succinct manner rather than... <laughs> a couple hundred pages. Yeah, so how many yeah. pages do we need? Uh, maybe, maybe that's... Uh, like a summary. Yeah, a summary. A legal, yes. a legal summary of both pro and con. Is, right, right. I'm, well, I don't want to speak for Councillor Huddle. But. Is that? Well, um, yes, and I think a, a legal summary of both pro and con have been put forward by the applicant and by uh, the opponent. So, in other words, if uh, you receive something today from Orca, Sean Malone, who talks about why you shouldn't consider the application for the effluent as well as why the um, original application is expired. And then um, from Mr. Close earlier, and it's in your packet here, and they're supporting documents. If I could just, if you have a note, I could point you to where I think it exists in the, you have your special meeting, you had packet one and then packet 2A. I think 2A is primarily from the applicant um, and mm, I think on page 15 of 2A is it their original application outlining things and then you get into and you heard them talk about um, how they've done development and what that means with respect to the application whether it expired or not and that's um, found in 2A on pages 56, 57 um, through looks like 70. So there's 20 some odd pages there. And then 
Um, again, Mr. Close on page 75 of packet 2A has done the legal arguments um, in support of uh, the application being, for lack of a better term, vested or, or just that they've, under our code, complied with our code, that they've commenced development. Um, well, we can pull those pertinent sections and, okay. for you, mm -hmm. so right. you don't have to try to yeah, pluck them right. out. They're, they're pretty, yeah. Well, I guess I'm just kind of linear. I like sure mm -hmm. yeah. to That's see things cool. in a real succinct, and none of the legalese okay. stuff. All right. Okay. Good enough. Commissioner Boyd? I'm just wondering, I assume then there's no way we can take a position today to ex okay. automatically extend the, uh, the, the permit. Uh, so it's not hanging over their head, uh, you know, the, the original one-year permit. You you cannot because uh, someone has asked for the record to be kept open. So in theory, more information could come in, and you're supposed to consider all the information and make your decision. So thank you. Um, so now I'm looking. Does anybody have any other discussion items? So I'm looking for a motion that that talks about what, what uh, Councilor Huddle to keep said. So it would be keep to open uh, for keep the record open for 14 days until 5 p.m. on January 31st, and then to allow all parties to rebut any additional and new evidence and argument by February 7th at 5 p.m., and then to reset this matter for board consideration to allow and consider the final rebuttal or sir rebuttal whatever phraseology we're getting into there by February 14th um, at a 2.30 meeting. Um, is that clear enough? I think it is. I, okay. I have one question. All right. It's just because I... Um, is there any time frame in the, the zoning code or in the ORS by which we can say the testimony needs to be in for the board to review? I'm sorry. On, on, you said by 5 p.m. So that means if something comes in at 5.01 p.m., it's, we're, it would be not the considered. store is closed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. And that's 5 p.m. January 31st. Okay. Yeah. After that, nothing new. Okay. Well, right. And so then, nothing new. Well, right. Yeah. Then there's, yeah. then the there's ability to rebut yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. So they can, again, that's the distinction there. They can't add new things. They have to rebut something already in the record. But... Uh, and correct me if I'm wrong. My understanding is that during that rebuttal period, it can be only people that have already, by January 31st, submitted something, either oral or written testimony. Because well, I have not done so, I could not um, put in my two cents worth in the sense of rebutting one or more of the prior submittals. Am I correct on that? Or let me I take wrong? a look. Yeah, I've got the ORS. This is in. This is in. I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. This is Oregon land use law. This Which is the most Chapter complicated in the U.S. They have special rules for um, how you handle this. Um, and I'm just going to try to get to it right now. This really is convoluted. really horrible. convoluted. Yes. <coughs> you don't have standing. That's right. That's why I'm what? not So this is 197.763. Uh, and... What it says here, um, if the hearing authority grants a continuance, the hearing shall be continued to a date, time, place, certain, at least seven days. Um, and then it just says an opportunity to be provided. And then the record can be le left open for at least seven days for purpose. And then it says that they leave the record open. The record shall be left open for seven days. Any participant. So, yes, John hit what you're saying there is a participant. So anyone who's already submitted right. um, and then um, that's it and the last seven days is closed to all other parties the applicant alone gets to submit the final written arguments in support of the application so that's um, 197763 so could I get a motion for the continuance and uh, all of the other things that were mentioned I would motion and the, the public hearing has already been closed to leave the record open until 5 p.m. January 31st, mm -hmm. 2018, to allow rebuttal until 5 p.m. February 7th, 2018, mm -hmm. 
and then any final comments or responses left to the applicant and to have a Board of Commissioner meeting to be held at 2.30 p.m. on February 14th to consider and possibly make a decision, a final decision at that time. February 14th. February 14th. At 2.30. At 2.30. All of those are Wednesdays. So do Valentine's we have Valentine's Day. I was going to say, uh, we're going to have a big heart or something. Like so that. everybody understands the motion, oh, correct? Is that correct? Yep, that's yeah. that's a good summary of the motion. Do we have a second? A second, Madam Chair. Any discussion? I'll, uh, I'll call for the question. Aye. Aye. Okay, this meeting's closed then. Thank you all for coming. Thank you. We'll be looking forward to Valentine's Day this year. Oh, yeah.